Hey everybody, I'm back from vacation and here to tell you all about Atomic Blonde. Mainly that this is an amazing movie and you should go see it. Sorry, normally I would go a lot more in depth with some of the plot and stuff that develops within this movie and you would expect it not to be that much for an action flick. Well, sorry to tell you, the trailers did a interesting job hiding what this movie actually is. This is not an action movie. If you go in wanting to see an action film, you're going to be slightly disappointed. The movie you're looking at is actually a spy thriller. Yes, an old school spy thriller brought in the modern day era. Though the movie itself takes place during the Cold War. Which, if you know anything about that, heck, you have more alliances, backstabbing, and people getting stabbed, figuratively and literally, than Game of Thrones. By the way, watch the new season, it is amazing. But yes, this takes place during the Cold War, and it's basically the spy thriller genre. Don't know who to trust, who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, is the good guy the bad guy, is the bad guy the good guy. All subjective, really. And this actually does play with that mentality very well. What could be seen as an evil act is actually a good act, and what could be seen as a good act could actually be seen as an evil act. It's the balancing between what is good and evil. And, yeah, it's James McAvoy does his role to do that. <laughs> I swear, he is trying so hard not to be Captain Boomerang in this movie, but his outfit and design looks kinda like it, especially with some of his mannerisms in how he portrays his, well, spyhood. And same with Charlie's their own. The two both on the same side, MI6, and if you don't know who they are, they're basically the British CIA. And, well, they approach it very differently. And they act very accordingly to the roles they're presented with. And, yeah, Charlize Theron, definitely a force to be reckoned with in this movie. I'm not saying I would think she would win in a fight against Ronda Rousey. But I would rather fight Ronda Rousey than her character from this movie. Seriously, guys. This is some of the most brutal, realistic fighting I have seen in a movie in a long, long time. And what I mean by that is, most people don't go out with one hit. Especially with the way some of the people that are in this movie are built. You think you take a shot to the head? Nah, adrenaline pumps in. These guys are roy... Well, I'm not going to say roided out. One of them did. But they're muscle-bound. They're meatheads. They're charging. Just wailing on you over and over. And you're trying to do your little martial arts moves. You get the advantage. You hit them. But you're getting tired. Fights are very, very tough and long. And if you've ever been in a real fight, and I don't mean a you know, little sparring match, no, I mean a legit fight, it drains you. And they go from one to the next, to the next, to the next. It's kind of, yeah, draining. Which is the one thing I will give these action set pieces credit. Like I said earlier, this is not an action film, this is a, sci uh, <laughs> a spy movie. So, when the action does come up, it's pretty intense. Charlize is beating up two guys, like, one of these dudes, he deserves a raise because he just got abused over and over and over. And while most of the guys got shot at least once before they started to get wear down, this poor bloke just... Mm, yeah. It's kind of like that scene from The Punisher where he fights the one Russian dude, the blonde guy. Actually kind of uh, on the nose for this movie, actually. But yeah, just keeps wailing on him over and over. You just won't go down, and you feel bad for the guy. And then she actually does something, you know, tactful. Oh, they're coming at me? Well, let's see. They're men, and men have a certain area that they're weak to, so I'm going to attack it. I'm going to hit it as many times as I can and stab stuff in it. And then when that's gone, guess what? They have this wonderful thing called a face. Stab, stab, stab. Yeah, she smartly, and for any of you women watching this, fun fact, if you are concerned, take the keys you have in your pocket and put them between your knuckles. 
So when you punch your would-be assailant, they will get stabbed over and over again with the keys. <laughs> it's not as pretty as you would think, but very effective. I can vouch. Very effective. But yeah, this poor guy just got wailed on. And anything more, we're getting to the spoiler section. And yeah, that's not happening this time, guys. Sorry, I know, been a week. Normally I would have these be a lot longer, but I'm afraid I'm gonna have to cut it here. So, yeah, Atomic Blonde. Definitely one I would say a must see. Do you need to see it in theaters? Mm, probably not. In terms of scale and size, it's very kept close quarter, down to earth, which does this movie a great favor. But definitely matinee, definitely if you're a fan of any spy thriller, if you want to see just some good acting, good script, good pacing, this is a movie for you. And if you can't make it to the movie theaters, make a little list, trust me, Redbox, Netflix, and it will be on TV, I can almost assure you of that. Well, I might have to be censored a good bit because, yeah, there's some naked people in this. Not Game of Thrones level naked, I assure you, but kind of some naked. You will see many posteriors. Yeah. So, Atomic Blonde, two thumbs up, go see it. If you can, watch it later. Yeah, you know... I originally was only going to do one review for you guys this week, but I owe you something. I owe you something a little bit extra. So, I'm going to review a movie that, upon me looking at my phone a little bit ago, currently has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes out of 22 critics. Yeah, guys, I know it's going to be horrible. But I'm gonna go review the Emoji Movie. Please pray for my soul. Well, until the Emoji Movie, I'm Kevin Riley signing off and see you all next time. Later.